Introducing two time Emmy Award winning poet Blues Rogers. Blues, 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 Blues Rogers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to rbeats.com here again. And today we're on We Talk Raw. I got a special guest for you. And I always, I always like to tell you I have special guests. They're all special. Uh, this one is really special. He's an Emmy Award winning poet. He is a spoken word artist. He is a national slam poetry champion. He's a curator of some great events, and he's been, been behind um, you know, slam poetry teams that have competed nationally, but he's also, for the city of Charlotte, which is our base, he's done so much for the city, things that are historic and have been game-changing for the city, even involved in how we're an all-American city. So we'll, we'll talk on as, as touch as many points as we can today. But will you welcome to the show, and I want to welcome you to the show, Mr. Blues Rogers. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, that uh, intro was amazing. Like, I don't think I've ever been a part of a, a technical intro that's been that, well, dude, like, that you're, dope. You're so. worth it. Do you not think that they would roll out, they would ah, roll out yeah, the red yeah. carpet for you? Come in here and show up as a guy ready to be interviewed, <laughs> and then y'all pull out all the stops. So I love it. I'll let them know what the legend you it. were. So they, they <laughs> looked up your stuff. They, they know. And you know, uh, I first got to know about you during, of all times, the pandemic, mm. because I was, you know, was new to a relationship then with an actual poet, and she was part of a thing called the Boom Festival, mm -hmm. and you were the host of the Boom Festival, but it was on video. Yeah, like it, it's all online. It was, yeah. yeah, it was not a live event, because we couldn't do live events back then. So I saw your face, and I was listening to your words, I was like, this, this guy is very interesting. And then I got to, you know, know you through some other events. You have a, a just storied history with the city of Charlotte and the things you've done, but just the mere fact of how you began to get involved in this is one of the better stories that I've heard. So just let everyone know, how did you get the poetry <laughs> bug? How did you get involved in, in just poetry, which will lead into the things that that led into? Yeah. Um, it's a classic tale of, of boy meets girl, but even before that, uh, I got introduced to poetry through my English teacher who gave us this assignment to take Shakespeare and sort of rework it into a modern time. And now we're talking like the late 90s, right? So I took Shakespeare and turned it into sort of like this hip hop thing. It was the East Side versus the West Side. and these, Which is you know, brilliant enough. You know, and this boy and this girl, they fall in love and it's not right. Da, 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 da. So I thought it was genius. My teacher like ended up giving me a C on the paper. I'm like, you... You can't, this is top-notch <laughs> work here. Uh, but that was my competitive side coming out, right? Because I've played soccer since I was like eight. And so I've always had this competitive nature to me. And, you know, it was that saying, uh, you know, I could do better, you know, on my own self. But also it made me realize that poetry can be more than just Shakespeare, more than all these things. It can actually have some, some relevancy in, in your life, depending on how you approach it. So... You know, that was my, I think, my junior year of high school. And then I, uh, me and the young lady I was with at the time, we graduate. She goes into the Army. I go to Charlotte. We try to make it work. It does not work. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it goes bad. It goes bad. Um, I end up driving all the way home from, from Savannah, Georgia, where she was after the breakup. I drove all the way back to Charlotte crying the whole time in the car. It was it was very sad. It's one of those moments where, <laughs> you know, you play the radio and every song every that comes song, on is about their relationship, song, yeah. right? So it was that. So it was like just me in the car, the car engine and my tears that powered me all the way home. Um, so I get back to Charlotte. I am hurt. I'm devastated. And I just kind of, I don't want, you know, to end myself because I wasn't, I mean, I was hurt, but I didn't want that. And poetry is what helped me heal. So it gets me out of that. And uh, I start writing and everybody's like, oh, your poems are so good. They're really sad, though, but they're good. Uh, and then I get into some erotic poetry and then everybody's responding to that. So I'm like, oh, I want to make everybody, you know, I like that response. That is great. I will do this forever. Um, and then Jessica Caremore comes to UNCC and completely turns my life upside down in, in terms of poetry the way she was able to get into people's hearts and minds and souls and make them stand up and cheer, make them cry, make them laugh. I'm like, okay, 
That's how I want to make people feel. The power feel. of words. Yeah. And, and even and greater I'm, power, the power of people that know how to put those words together exactly, for the right use. Exactly. Exactly. And ever since then, that's where I've been. That's that's what my trajectory has been. So we fast forward through all that stuff. I, I get hooked up with uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Williams, who's working at Raycom at the time. And then we do some stuff. And I do some stuff with NASCAR. And of course, the Hornets and the Panthers, and the list goes on and on. So yeah, we'll come yeah. back to that. Let's yeah. let's go back even to that beginning because it's such an important point. Mm-hmm. You know, it uh, we skipped over it a little bit, but it was it was really important moments like that are make or break moments. Mm. I mean, I know C is an okay grade, and some of my stuff back then C was probably a good grade. <laughs> but when when you have put your heart and soul into something, yeah, and people don't respond right. the way that you think they respond. I mean, it can be that grade. It can be this Instagram post that you work mm-hmm. for days on. You go in there and it gets three likes, you know, or or whatever it is. Or, or you write these songs that never get out anywhere. I I talk to so many people that these things happen, mm-hmm. and it sometimes is a breaking moment for them. Yeah, you said that your what got you through it was your competitive edge, you know, yeah. from playing sports, yeah. and maybe you know that. That could be a, a great point just right there. For sure. But having something that that teaches you or that you that that ingrains in you that this is just a moment. Mm. And you get past this moment and you do the next thing. But you learn from that it's not even really a failure, but sometimes those right. things are failure. You learn from that and you move on. Like exactly. what can you change? How can you get that better? Or why didn't this person respond? Right. Was it just not the right audience? Was it right. just not their thing? Yeah. And then, of course, going through that heartbreak, which taught you another way that you're writing. I don't know how you went from heartbreak to erotic. That's your own personal (laughs) business. (laughs) What happened there? But, you know, to be able to write, you know, in in another genre like that, it just it gave you a starting point for a Mm -hmm. well-rounded career with what you're doing with your words oh for sure so yeah it's it is that moment where you decide is this where i'm gonna stop or is this where i'm gonna learn from and i usually try to take every moment that i lose you know or fail as a teaching moment right like okay what happened why did that happen how do i you know not let it happen again or how do i build upon it you know and so that C was was informational to the point where, okay, maybe technically, you know, grammar-wise, yada, yada, all that's a C. But creatively, the idea of it, the reason why I wrote it, definitely like A+. Plus. Um, and it also showed me like, oh, there are, there are ways to approach this art form. There are ways to approach this academic sense of what poetry is from a whole different way. Um, that's not always been, you know, what we've been taught it has to be. Right. And I'm always, and people who know me, I'm, I'm tend to be a rule breaker, right? Not, not for any kind of like malicious sense, but you know, in a creative way, like, okay, you tell me the parameters of what it means to paint a painting. And I want to be like, okay, what hasn't been done before? How do we bend the rule on that? How, How can't we, the sky be a different color? Right. Why does a human face have to look like this? Exactly. How do we push the envelope on all of it? So, yeah, that that is so correct. All, all these breaking moments, these moments of, you know, a truth about ourselves. Like when when do we say that I refuse to accept this as the reality right now? You know, and the artists are the leaders in that. Right. When people see you thinking like that, it helps them realize, hey, I can think a little bit outside of my circumstances for sure and you've done that for other people of course you know we talked about my wife you you did that for her you were giving her opportunities and you still have i mean even recently you've you've stepped up to the plate for her and i i've talked to uh, a person that was writing a book and they were stopping with a book and they credit you for saying hey why are you stopping with this book this could become a play and you know it ends up on stage and really it, it became a a Thing with legs of its own yeah. and grew really well, but it was just that encouragement yeah. of saying, "Hey, you know, you got something great here," and using those words that you have to encourage other people, like you have. Uh, the one that I heard you introduce recently, I think her name was Cookie. Amazing, oh yeah, poet. amazing yeah. spoken word. But you saw something there, you know, and you you push. You had a great intro for her. Yeah, I and I appreciate that. Um, 
Yeah, I, I I tend to see people, you know, as as bigger than they are. I think everyone in this world needs to be seen as a hero at some point in time, right? Maybe yeah. not all the time, but at some point in time. Because we'll forget our own greatness, right? We'll forget how how dope we are, how how much we mean to somebody else or how impactful we can be. And I I love that. I love the fact that I that I tend to see people like that. Like I don't know, it because it inspires me. It inspires me to want to write, it inspires me to 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 want to create. Um especially when I see you kind of doing your own thing. Like I'm always in awe and inspired by and a little jealous of people who can sing. Like how do you just like make your voice beautiful like that? And I'm just like that is make a noise with your mouth. Make a noise with your and mouth. People throw money and at people you. People give you money for it. Like <laughs> yeah. that is incredible. Yeah. And it sounds great. And like, they want you to do something you learned in the third grade, which yeah. is sign your name and <laughs> you know, anything that they have with your picture exactly. on it. Exactly. And I'm like, I, I feel like we need to celebrate those folks. Like if, if we celebrate a Beyonce and a Taylor Swift, we need to celebrate someone who lives next door who's just as powerful, right? Because we don't know how their story could end up and we don't know how else they'll impact somebody. And that's what I like to like. I want to encourage you so you continue to be an encouraging person so that someone else who sees you has that same exact feeling. The same nine-year-old kid who's like, I just saw Cookie for the first time at my school. Now I want to write. Who sees yeah. like Terry and, and doing his happens. own podcast show. Like, I see that. I want to do that. Like, we all have to be beacons for other people, but we also have to be reminded that we're heroes at the same time at what yeah. we're doing. So. Yeah. yeah, and that's, that's so great that you're encouraged that. So let's talk about there's poetry, but then there's that next step, which is, uh, and we're going to hit a couple steps here, but that mm -hmm. next step would be spoken word okay. poetry, yeah. which that's just, you know, like performing arts. The, oh, yeah, the for sure. singers you were talking about, mm -hmm. it's the same exact thing. Your stuff has to look different. Right. It has to sound right. different in your show. So what was your journey there then? Um, and that would start sort of into the slam world, right? Um, Which was going to be my next thing. Keep, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. Even so the more. poetry, uh, the spoken word probably lends itself sort of to the open mic. So if we go back to the erotic thing, right? Um, I'm writing poetry and it's all living on paper. And the, the woman who I meet, who will be like my next girlfriend for a while, reads it. And she's like, yeah, this is kind of sad, but I, I get it. You know, you should do it at an open mic. And I do. And the responses are, you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then I, I think I heard someone doing an erotic poem. I'm like, I wonder if I could do that. And I did it. And the response was crazy, yeah. right? The I perform and I got the response. That's when I was like, oh, that feeling is what I want to feel all the time, right? I want the oohs and ahs and ooh. You know, it is that quick gratification. Um, and so that's sort of what gets me to doing that part of it. But that performative aspect of what we do inside of inside of poetry is thrilling, right? Because it is it is evoking all the emotions. Um, it's being super funny, it's being super sad, it's being super angry, but it's all very visceral right there on the mic on the stage no interpretation from a piece of paper or anything for someone to read you are it is from the horse's mouth yeah. that you're giving it to so yeah and, that's the emoting word part. yeah right. the emoting so the spoken word part is is super fun like it is there are a lot of people who are way better spoken word artists than they are like page poets right which is fine, right? Yeah, Which is fine. Can be two different um, things. Because page poets often, sometimes they suck as a as a spoken word artist. But it is what it is. And maybe somebody else can read their stuff. You know, that part too. So that's when we start getting into like, well, if I collapse. write a script for someone yeah. else, can they can they perform? So yeah, I, I love I love being the spoken the spoken word artist part of it is is the most fun for me. The poetry part is cool. It's it's a little bit more more sort of brainy, heady kind of thing, which I don't shy away from it, but there are people who are super talented at it. And I'm just like, mm, at the end of the day, you're just kind of writing words down and putting it together, which is really generalizing it. I know it's more than that, but for me, uh, I love to write it and I love to have, you know, I love to play with form and whatever, but at the end of the day, if, if I'm allowed to read it aloud, oh, I'm going to take that every yeah. single time. For and, sure. and we had, we had a, a live performance coach on uh, a few episodes back and and being involved with him and working on a couple of things one thing that we used to do with artists is we tell them 
your songs don't sound alike. Why do they look alike? And we would videotape them and show it to them and then fast forward while they had their backs turned and then hit it again and they had to tell us where they were. You know, like, what wow. song is this? And I think that would be great for spoken word artists, yeah. too. Because you're up there, you know, even open mics or live performances, whatever you're doing, you have four or more, right? Uh, you know, uh, different works that you've done. They have to look different. They have yeah. to enthrall that audience. Part of it's content. You know, you have some here that are social justice and, mm. and some here about uh, something you're hurting with. Like, I, I just saw a girl, um, a poet that was talking I think it was a few nights ago, and she was talking about uh, domestic violence and things mm -hmm. that she had been through, and that was her side. And then you have people that just talk about how much they love art or the the nature around them or right. the incredible buildings they see. So you have those things, and that's part of making it different. Mm -hmm. But your body language, because people see first, right, and they hear second, right. So if your words can be great, but they're looking at you first. So having different body language and slowing down tones for this and they have, some people add their you know their little singing quip in it mm -hmm, do that mm -hmm. but emote a little bit more and slow it down a little bit more or speed it up at this part it causes people to react different exactly i think that would be a good thing for for spoken word oh, artists it will i'm well. it's already in my brain I'm like i'm yeah. gonna try to use that like <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's to figure out where you are that's so dope yeah so now dope. when we go into the slam oh, poetry yeah that's spoken word but uh, it's more competitive mm -hmm. you know there are showcases i don't know if uh, i've i've only seen videos of your event and they seem to be competitive in in nature yeah. some are showcases some are competitive then you have time clocks and things like that all this stuff you know involved <laughs> as, as well and of course judges and audience mm -hmm. response mm -hmm. and you do your own events with that so how did how did you get involved with that and what was your journey to get to the championship. Oh, so that's a that's another great question. Uh, shout out to UNCC, where all of these things are my formative years of poetry. Um, while I'm at UNCC doing these open mics, a guy named Terry Creech uh, hears me and gets inspired to do poetry too. And so he moves to Texas, where he gets involved in this thing called Poetry Slam. Um, and Poetry Slam is an event created by Mark Smith in Chicago, yeah, where it Chicago. takes... Uh, you get a poem, you get three minutes and 10 seconds to do your poem, and then you're judged by five random people and get a score, right? And these people are blue collar workers, whatever, whatever. Like they don't know anything about poetry. They just happen to be judging a poetry slam, right? Uh, so he goes, Terry goes to Texas, comes back and introduces our scene to Poetry Slam. And that's how I get into Poetry Slam. So it's 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 a wild way to say... I got myself into it in a way like <laughs> I inspired a guy who came back and, you know, got me into it. And so our first year we're, we're learning how to be slam poets. We're learning the game and the rules and whatnot. And Terry tells us in our, like, this is y'all's first year, you know, don't expect to do, you know, well, you're rookies and, in my brain, I'm like, did you just tell me I can't Competitive win? Sports is exactly. Did you just say I can't you know win? No, I got a C and all came back. <laughs> so our first year we made it to semifinals, which is sort of, was sort of unheard of for a team. Then our second year we made it to final stage wow. and placed second. And that's when I knew I was like, Oh yeah, this club. we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna win this thing. The next time the next time we're around, we're gonna win. And a couple years down the line, we 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 won back to back. Oh seven and oh eight, we ended up winning back to back. And then, the very last slam that ever happened ever was in twenty eighteen in Chicago, where it all started, and we won that one. So three time national champs had never been done by a team before. So and a team from the south, right? So then there's that part. The slam poetry is so is so unique it is it is and i know we talked a little bit about wrestling but it, it's it's the thing that you have to see and to enjoy it right to really like get right. what's happening They're lying. you know i could tell you about it all day long but until you see it you'll be like oh this is a whole lot of fun right um it's these words and this magic and the emote motion uh, coming from poets um that sits in someone's soul and they they give it a score right and the the fun thing about it is if a if a judge gives a score and the crowd hates it the crowd gets to boo that judge like boo <laughs> yeah. what do you know right um that makes it all the more fun it's also letting the poet know like yeah that judge got it wrong but you all 
definitely know that I did way better than that. Um, and it's and it's any given Sunday kind of thing. Anyone can win. Anyone can win a poetry slam. You could come up there with a poem about the the hurt you've experienced, the 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 loss of a mother, the gain of a father, the, all the things. And someone could come up there with a poem about Pop Tarts and win. And you're like, oh my God, is that what's happening? That's exactly. It's the yeah. most fairest unfair game that there is. In the raw. Yeah. So great. They're all very great, right? Even the ridiculous poems are are often great. And then you have some that are just like, eh, you know, it's it's whatever. But it gives everybody a chance to be a poet in in that form, in that format. You never know what kind of spark you're starting there too. Absolutely. It, it, it mirrors music so much with with it's something that has to be seen live mm-hmm. and so much fun when you go. You never know what you're going to get. And Absolutely. you'll see some opening artists. Like I always tell people like Dua Lipa, the first time I saw her open for Bruno, not a great thing. But right. within one year, she put that work in and superstar. Super And, and star. you never know what you're getting at these open mics even. I've seen so many people. You see them at open mic. Next thing you know, they're on American Idol. Yeah. And yeah. So and it's, it's crazy. You'd be like, I just saw that person for free. Yeah. And now their ticket is like a hundred bucks. Yeah. And you know what? It should be because they were amazing then they and they're amazing now. In. And they put that work in yeah. for sure. Well, when we come back, I want to come, I want to talk about some of the other things that you do. And I, I want us to, to talk for these aspiring poets and, and musicians that are, are listening. Talk about the real ways that your money should be getting or your art should be getting some money mm-hmm. and moves that you can make. To make that happen better, because you've been pretty excellent at that. I mean, so been okay. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back with with blues. Right now, we're just going to take a quick break to hear from our friends and our sponsors. So, see you in a couple minutes. Welcome back to this week's segment of What's Trending Now on Arbeats Radio, Media, and Streaming Network. Upcoming local, national, and international concerts. Starting off with Ann Wilson, she's setting out on her Rebel tour for all Charlotte viewers. She's performing at Ovens Auditorium on Thursday, September 26th. Doors open at 7 p.m. You can get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. Crashing on the scene, Kalani is performing at the Skyla Credit Union Amphitheater on Wednesday, October 2nd. Doors open at 7.30 p.m. You can get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. Fair Girls presents the Underland Tour at the Black Box Theater on Friday, October 18th. Doors open at 10 p.m. You must be 18 or older. You can get your tickets at BlackBoxCharlotte.com. This is Annalise Pearl, bringing you all the new details on the latest trending water cooler conversation. Stay on top of the Rbeats app and Rbeats.com, always bringing you the best of the best independent, national, and international music artists, concerts, and influences on the Rbeats app. Let's get started with this week's DJ World Beats Top Trending Songs. Spinning now on Rbeats Radio or House and EDM Stream, DJ World Beats brings you Bella Sazoski, The Revival, Steve Aoki, 22 Bullets, Miami, Cashmere and Seven Skies with Out of Control. We have three from Serial. We have We Don't Need, The Sound of Silence, A Horse with No Name, Serial Remix. Spinning on We Global Radio or Hip Hop and R&B stream, we have Eckley with his new single, Under the Moonlight. Coming up on our Gospel, Soul, and Praise stream, The Vessel Radio, we have two from Toby Wigway, Can You Imagine, and Moon and Sunlight. Young John with his single, Stronger. Hitting hard on our classic rock and country station, USA Heroes, we have Fallen in Reverse, Prequel. And closing out on 258366, our global pop stream, we have two from Sophie Tucker, Wolf, and Bread. That concludes this week's countdown. Don't forget to check the Only Bangers Hits Different exclusive DJ World Beats playlist on Spotify. Welcome to the world where rhythm meets passion, where your brand dances to a beat of its own, This is rbeats.com, your one-stop solution for all things music. Imagine your brand soaring high on the wings of a pulsating beat. Picture the thrill of a crowd, energized by a soundtrack that perfectly encapsulates your vision. That's what we do here at rbeats.com. Our mission is to intertwine your story with a unique rhythm that captures the heart of your brand. Whether you're a startup looking to make a grand entrance or an established brand aiming to redefine your sound, we've got you covered. From adrenaline-pumping tracks for a sports brand to soothing melodies for a wellness venture, our beats are as diverse as your needs. Remember, it's not just about the beat, it's about the rhythm of your brand. So come, join us at rbeats.com, where your brand finds its beat. rbeats.com, your brand, our beats. Welcome back. I'm here in the studio here at rbeats.com with Blues Rogers. He is a 
National Poetry Slam champion. He is also a Emmy award-winning spoken word artist. And we're going to talk about a couple more things he does while he's here. And we just get it all out in the open, right? Yeah, yeah. So, let's do welcome it. back, Blues, and welcome back to our audience. I know that you're also really well known for voiceovers. Yeah. So done, done, a, done a voiceover so, too. So what's going on? Yeah. What's going on with the voiceovers? Um, it all started with uh, working with Raycom Sports actually, uh, and doing some videos for them for the ACC and SC. SEC tournament at the time. Um, yeah, it was, I, I know how to read, <laughs> I guess, and I speak well. I don't know. It was it was just sort of a, a natural click. Uh, so I, I do that. And the thing about Charlotte, especially sort of in this world, and you know, you know, it's a small world when we talk about television and video and, and these other kind of things. So my name started floating around with a couple of producers who put things together and they liked my voice and my writing style. And they were like, yo, let's do some stuff. Um, so, you know, I got to do voiceovers with the Hornets and some stuff with the Panthers yeah. for their for their preseason stuff um, and a lot of other things, too. I've done an audio book, which was 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 different. Um, it's a long read. It was a long day, uh, and they needed it done in a day, so wow. we, we knocked it out. And I've done, you know, a, a couple of short films and small movie stuff, but yeah, it's it's really fun. You know, the harder, the easier. It's wild to say this. The easier thing to do is probably like, you know, for TV shows and maybe a couple movies. The commercials are hard to break into because there's just so many people out there doing right. that kind of work, but. You know, when you can get in it, if you can get the work, it's it's really fun. And you just got to be consistent with it. That, that's the biggest thing. I mean, anything anybody that knows done anything like that is like you get those opportunities, but you show up for those opportunities. Right. You don't run over time. You you sound flawless, as flawless as you can when you're exactly. doing it. You if, know your script. <laughs> that helps. Not, not stumbling over everything. That helps so much. Cut the tapes. <laughs> As much as you can, and you know when when you build that reputation, and you're just incredibly nice to deal with. You know what? And I'm glad you said that because I tell people that all the time. Like you could be the most super talented person out there, but if you are a complete butthole, no one's gonna want to work with you. Like, but if you're like a little rough around the edges, but you know you show up on time, you're super nice, you're you take direction well. They call the, you back every time. Treat the crew very right. well. They call you back every time because no one wants stress at their job. Right. They want to do a great job, but you know, stress at your job makes you hate the job. And if someone is making you hate your job, you never want to work with that person again. I've always right. felt that, that that way of treating people came from a fear anyway. Right. You know, it was just to mask a fear. So so unnecessary. Unnecessary. Yeah. Right. And, and I've I've dealt with actors like that in movies and I've definitely dealt with musicians. Yeah. Like that. And it's like, these people are paying a lot of money to come see your show, and it'd be great if you were nice to everybody. It just, Especially you know, the promoter as well. Exactly. The fan. <laughs> just a little respect and niceness yeah. goes a long way. Absolutely. So, when you're, whether you're a visual artist, whether you're a musician, mm -hmm. whether you are a um, slam poet, spoken word artist, um, dancer, whatever it is, and you're trying to make money from your art, mm -hmm. the biggest thing, and you're great at this, is seeing opportunity that no one else sees because they're looking at this blank place and they can't picture what goes there. Right. And that is. <laughs> you just got to take some time to learn that creativity to, yeah. to see opportunities where nobody else is seeing them. Right. Exactly. And be willing to walk in places where you know you're going to hear no the first time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how, what is your process for seeing those kind of things? Um, I always, I always say for, especially for poets, look where poetry isn't try to place poetry where it isn't you know, the old saying, put paint where it ain't kind of thing, put poetry where it isn't. Um, and that's, that's you sort of approaching a situation. But um, what I've always said was, Try not to say no to everything, no matter how weird it feels and sounds like. So for the NASCAR thing, that that was an amazing opportunity that I spent working about two and a half years with them. And it all came from at the time where Creative Loafing was an actual newspaper oh, yeah, in the city uh, for the young people. That's when we had actual newspapers that, that came out. 
And I put, I did an interview with them and it was like this little, mm, you know, what are your hobbies and what do you like to do? So it was like hobbies. Uh, I like NASCAR. It's not necessarily a hobby, but I like soccer. Da, da, da. I listed these things. And one of the producers from NASCAR just happened to be reading the paper that day and saw it and saw me and was like, mm, I got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he calls me and says, hey, I have this opportunity. Uh, I'd like to, you know, do some spoken word around this race coming up uh, called the Brickyard 400. This is when the race was new. And I was like, oh, cool, man. You know, I, I for half a second didn't think it was real. Right. And the guy was like, no, we're the, we're the real deal. <laughs> It, it, just as soon as I thought it, he said it. Because at some point in time, NASCAR was sort of being hijacked by a bunch of companies saying they were NASCAR when they weren't. Anyway. Got you. Um, so I say yes, because why not, right? What's the worst that could happen? Um, and it turns out it's a legit opportunity. It turns out we go to Indiana to go to the Indianapolis Speedway to shoot this entire video. Wow. And Sprint loved it. And Sprint's like, oh, let's keep going. And that you know, lasted for two years, but it was, it was embracing who I was and what I liked. And then someone asking me, did I want to do a thing that was way out of my comfort zone, way out of the normal, get on the open mic scene and, you know, do the thing that I do. It was being the blackest person that I am culturally, aesthetically, and all the things entering into one of the whitest <laughs> cultural events on the planet and then rocking it out, like making it so that people, everyone enjoyed it, right? Um, so it is It is always seeing these moments, enjoying what it is that you do that's outside of your art form, and then going back to find a way to connect into it. And do it really well. Do it well. I just, I was, one of my favorite new songs I was listening to is by this group called For King and Country, which I'm kind of new to them. I know they've been around mm -hmm. a while, but they have this line that says, uh, be the light that they can't ignore. Right. Yeah. And right. showing up well, being that sure. light that they Ex can't ignore. They exactly. Can, the, the other thing, I heard an actor um, talking to, the other day, I was watching YouTube, and he was talking about how he got started. He said, you know, it's it's part skill, but it's also a lot of luck. And he was telling how he was in this one movie. Somebody saw him in that movie. They asked him, could he come down and meet with him? Same thing that you thought. Is this really the people calling me right now? Right, right. It was a big star that called him. And that movie that he was in ended up being this Oscar-winning movie that launched his career. And he was talking about that being luck. But one thing that I have found, that is that when you create a lot of stuff, you get yourself out there a lot. Luck seems to come your way a little bit more. Mm -hmm. you know, luck stops a, being, a lot more. Luck stops being luck and it begins... Uh, it begins to be the opportunities that that get attracted to you because of the company you keep, the work ethic that you put out there, and and a staying lot of on it your branding. Is staying on your branding, right? That yeah. is that's exactly what happens. So, yeah, to 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 that effect, I I just I showed up, I was nice, but I was also listening, right? Because and that's what I, I also remind poets too who get in these positions. Don't go offering a bunch of stuff they didn't ask you for right. because now you look like you're a know-it-all or, you know, it, you you seem a little pushy, right? If no one has asked you for notes, don't offer them, you know? But if they say, hey, what do you think? Give them the best ideas ever. That way they'll want to keep coming back to you for that. But, you know, do the thing you're hired for, right? Do that first and do it well. And then if anything else pops off from that, then... You continue on. And people are like, well, that's a little, you know, if you're not ambitious to go after it. I've seen what ambition can do, and it, it can work for some people. But I've also seen some people, they never get anything else again because they're a little too ambitious. Or they were ambitious at the wrong time. Right? right, ambitious with the wrong personality. Exactly, exactly. If you feel yourself clashing with someone who's signing your checks, stop it. <laughs> yeah, no, you, Stop you, it. you can get a feel for that, but get yourself mm -hmm. in it first yeah. and then, you know, yeah. kind of feel it as you go. You can't read a room the first time you've been in a room. Right. Exactly. You, know, you learn to do that because let's say you're an artist, you've been on tour, you've read a few rooms or you've, you know the rules. So you eventually learn what you can break. Mm -hmm. And that, <clears throat> that reminds me of another thing, which is, you know, the networking part of it. One thing I've said on here a few times is your opportunities are as big as your circle. Yeah, there there are too many people that don't feel they need to go to networking events. They don't show up for enough open mics, and they if they do show up for the open mic, 
they don't stay and cheer on the people that are after them. I hate that. God, yeah. I hate that. Like that's the way you build a network. You that's stay and cheer those. If right. they if they buy your book, go buy their book. Yeah. And and in this world that we live in where content and everything is created so fast, you know, you feel like you don't need to go to an open mic. You don't go for six months or whatever. You pop up to one and it's all changed from the way you used to see it. Yeah. I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta be consistent or at least show a modicum of consistency to going out to these things. And no one is saying that you have to perform. Just show right. up. Just show up and let the people see that you still support these things and you're still listening and growing. You know, that's how you stay wildly enough. That's how you stay relevant. Right. If you're even if you're just showing up and maybe not performing all the time and, and you're going and you're learning and you're growing and you're getting something out of it each time that you go. You know, I I am a firm believer in that. And I also with the whole walking out thing, like I. I think I've done that maybe a few times, but it wasn't because I was like, I don't want to hear anymore. It's like I had somewhere else to be. Yeah, I was supposed to say, so, <laughs> you have your next gig. But I also say that, like, if I know I have somewhere else to be, like, don't put me on. Like, I can't stay. So I don't want to be that guy. I do want to listen and I do want to hear what's coming up. That way, you know, at least I got something out of it and I don't feel like I just dipped down on anybody. That's why sometimes if you see me and I'm in the back of the room, chances are. <laughs> You, now you see me, now you don't. Like, I'm going to be there and then I'll, I'll be gone. But I'm definitely down down to support as much as I can. So. And, and network and support, not just in your discipline. If you're a poet mm. or a spoken word artist, mm -hmm. go to the open mics full of music. Um, go to a live play where you get to know the actors afterwards. Yeah. Or, the, you know, when you have showcases for photographers and they're, they're having contests, show up for that. Yeah. And you end up somehow down the road you're collaborating with that photographer or you're collaborating with that musician i know one thing i'm working on right now for somebody which is my wife but i'm working on some some well-known live music performers that are putting her music to you know her poetry to music yeah but we met those by not just going to poetry events yeah you know, we we go to these other things as well and once you're uh in the room and you're meeting these people the next thing comes to really figuring out the money, not selling yourself short, not over promising and under delivering. But right. um, when I say don't sell yourself short, know what your worth is. Don't over evaluate it, but definitely don't under evaluate it sure. as well. And know where you're reading the room again. So let's talk about just that one part, asking for the money. So which can be difficult. I always say. Get yourself a manager if you do not like talking about this. Huh? It's it's super simple to do. But get someone who is passionate about who you are and what you do. Like, they're just passionate about making sure that you get your fair share, making sure you get your worth um, every time. Um, and sometimes that person has to maybe be a little aggressive and a little mean, you know, because that's what you need. I, I especially consider that for people who are working with, corporations and and folks that's who a have different the big breed. money that's a yes. different because they think they, different they think different they think like that they think aggressive they think they're going to go ahead and try to get you for what you know what they want you for and you need someone who is basically a shark and a bulldoggy in that because but who can still be somebody that people like you don't you don't have to be mean right to be a shark they just you just have to, to look at what you're looking at and exactly, stick to that point the environment so i always I, I you know i always say that and i also say like if you if you know you don't have anybody you know what is your car payment what's your rent right. what's what's the, what's the bill that you need paid and go maybe two or three times higher than that right so if your car note is 700 bucks go ahead and ask for a cool thousand you know ask for that you know if, if you think that's what you know, if you feel that's what your worth is. And like you said, understand what your worth is. And also, it's this is a read the room situation. If you are, if someone is coming to you and they clearly don't have a thousand dollars, you know, you're like, okay, let's let's figure this thing out. I I always typically say your baseline in this era and this market, baseline, the thing you should never go below is probably like 250 bucks for for anything up to 30 minutes maybe an hour, right? I think that is like a, a a neat little baseline for someone who might just be starting out or they're sort of getting into the market. But if you're a, if you're a vet at this thing, 
then your baseline is probably like 500. You know, that that's the lowest you can go. Um, and you'll find that a lot of times these folks have it, right? You'll know they have it when you give them a price and they're like, that, yeah, that's fine. Like, oh, you said yes way too fast. Yeah, like, and and negotiate said, well, yeah. down, not trying to go negotiate up. Exactly. So go a little, that's why I say go a little higher and then let them come down to a price that you're like, okay, that's where I wanted to get to actually. Yeah, and, and I think another thing to do in that is have the things that you're <clears throat> promising for, saying for that money, but when you come down and you have to come down, cut something out mm -hmm. because otherwise it's like, why did you drop from here to there? Oh, because, because that's I could that have price gotten, point up there. Right. right. It's like, <laughs> well, I'm dropping from here because I'm cutting out, you know, these specific things. Exactly. And, and that way you can, you know, you can meet in the middle fine. Exactly. Sometimes not in the middle, sometimes two thirds of the way there, but right. you have a place to meet and it's realistic and people don't look at it as, oh, you're just trying to to get what you're getting right and then you know if it's it's also if you need to add in the things that you've cut out like inside of your asking price so oh you want me to do a custom poem okay well it's going to take me these many days to write it i'm gonna have to do some research on your on your company um and what i like to do is if i write a custom piece i like to sort of sell it to the company Meaning I will never do any version of this type of work ever for anybody else. This is solely yours. And when I say it's solely yours, you can now, if a year from now you decide you want, I don't know, Don Cheadle to read this poem. You can do that because you own the poem. You can put this in all your advertising. You can do whatever you want with these words because I have sold sort of the copyright and and ownership over to you with this asking price that we have and that asking price is usually a little bit higher and i and i often get it because it's like a monet you know i i've painted you this amazing portrait right. and you can hang it up anywhere you want do whatever you want with it just know that i created it for you about you to you and it's that kind of art ownership that a lot of these bigger folks and people with money love to hear about the art ownership and your words are art folks who write custom songs absolutely that's that's so much bread and butter right there and it's all the way you present it you know if you present it just right people are willing to pay that price um because they're understanding they're getting a one of one a one of a kind a one of a kind kind of thing so but don't be afraid to ask for what you think you're worth right and there's this fear of well they're going to go with someone else and if they do that's fine that's fine. There's more out there. Right. There's there, always more there out are. there. There's, especially with communities now, for instance, uh, you see all these cities grow with murals. Mm. And a trend that I saw that worked really well for grocery stores and some other buildings was the muralist painted it, but they painted the artist words into it. And the artist, the, you know, the poet got paid yep. for their work in that building. Exactly. You know, that's that's one in itself. And they're, they're, look for the contest that the cities are holding. And you know, we're, we're trying to yeah. have a, a new paint job on our buses or a new wrap job. You know, they wrap now instead of paint. Mm -hmm. But we're, we need this kind of thing on that yep. bus. Or we have a new parking garage or a parking lot that we're putting some kind of mural up or we're putting some kind of, yep. you know, word up, whatever it is. And you can find those. You just, you got to look. You yeah. Do some internet research. That's it. That's all. And it's, and it's usually you know, one or two spots. And, you know, it always doesn't have to be holding to the, to the city that you live in. You know, while, while a lot of cities do want to keep their, their work and their, you know, their, their economics within the city. But I mean, if you find work in another town, absolutely go for it. You can do any, anything now. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. so much easier than it used to be. For sure. So what's next for you? Um, that is always a great question. And I've been asked that in the last couple of days. I've never had a straight answer. Uh, I've got the slam coming up. I'm doing a, a, a gala with the Hornets. And of course, the NBA C's season is coming up and they're doing the cup series again. So I'll be doing some some creative writing for that. Um, working on some music stuff and a book thing. And, you know, man, just out here doing a blues thing. Yeah. For sure. The blues thing. The blues thing. <laughs> well, you have definitely been rocking it. Thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate you having me. This is so much fun. This chair alone is worth <laughs> worth coming up here. Like, if I could just sit in this chair and just be looked at for a little while, this is so great. Uh, I, I was telling Karma this morning that I was going to have you on. You know, my, and For those that may not know, my wife's a poet, and she just, she's grateful to blues for all the things 
he was doing. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, we might even talk about you and how it, being married to a poet that when you come home to talk about your day, I don't even have to respond other than. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, well, oh, that's great. thank you to everybody that tuned in. Thank you to our guest, Blues Rogers. And when whatever you would, what you've heard there. Uh, he's he's much better at not stumbling evidently over his words than I am. But what you've heard there is is just get out and get it going. Yeah. And there are things that you can do to make money for your art so that you can do more art and you can inspire others and and be nice in, uh, to mm -hmm. those in the room because we want to see you succeed. That's why we're here. We want to see great arts and music scenes happening in your city. Yes. And just let us know. Write us and let us know what's going on here. You see uh, our uh, um. Instagram reels that we're putting out. So continue to support us there. And if you have suggestions for guests, just let us know. But until next time, much love. Introducing two time Emmy Award winning poet. Blues, Rogers. Blues, 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 Rogers.